Have you ever wondered why so many people out there are so interested in the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator or the MBTI for short? Have you ever felt that maybe the MBTI is just boxing people in? Today we're looking at why the MBTI is so big and what the MBTI is. The MBTI started emerging as a popular system of personality psychology after the Second World War. And this is no coincidence. At that stage, humanity started to hit a new era, a new stage in human development. Up to that point, nationality and identity had been one of the biggest concerns of the Western society. People were more focused on their identity as a tribe and as a people or a community or a country than as individuals. But after the Second World War, this all started to change. Suddenly we had a big group of women out there looking for jobs and for opportunities that had previously been ignored. Suddenly we were asked, what is special about you? What is your unique skill? And this is when the MBTI started to come in. The MBTI became a system to quickly categorize you into one of 16 groups of personalities, depending on your interests and motivations. Everyone was said to have unique values, unique interests that would make them the perfect fit for a special career. Some going into nursing, some becoming secretaries, some becoming engineers. Everyone was believed to have these unique skills that were different from other people. And this is why the MBTI is the strongest among a certain group of people. Those that are in their mid-twenties to late thirties. This group of people have just got uh, into their first real job after perhaps doing store jobs and small things. They are starting to wonder, okay, what is it I want to do for the rest of my life? What is it I want to devote myself to? So these people become increasingly focused on themselves, where primar primarily before that they were perhaps trying to earn the favor of their parents and of their family. Uh, while up to that point they were more focused on what they could do for the nation, they started to wonder what is it I can do for myself. Now the biggest realization here was that some people were introverted and some people were extroverted. What that meant was some people preferred to be on their own while other people preferred to work together with other people. That meant most of the time I would rather sit in the corner and work and focus on my own tasks or most of the time I would prefer to interact with other people and help others through my work. So here we already see a big difference in how different people were categorized by whether they wanted to work alone or whether they wanted to work with other people. Beyond that, the question was, are people more practical or are they more interested in abstract pursuits? That meant, do you want to produce something tangible? Do you want to focus on facts and what you know? Would you rather work with your hands or would you rather work with theories and experimentation? Yeah, some people were intuitive and some were sensing and the intuitives, they preferred to work with ideas while the sensors preferred to work with practical tasks. Similarly, a big realization was a lot of people were more feeling in their nature while some were more thinking. What that meant was some people preferred to work in more benevolent fields where they could work for other people. They could feel that they were helping other people as counselors, nurses or some kind of social support system. Other people preferred to work with data, numbers and figures. They felt more interested in analytical or strategic tasks where they could work with society or hierarchies, rules, laws. So the idea was, yeah, we can group people into, we can group careers into two matters. Those that have to do with helping people and those that have to do with helping society. Now finally, the last sector of the MTI was judging and perceiving. And judging was for people that preferred to work with goals, organization and long-term matters. And perceiving for those that preferred to work with adaptable, open and changing matters. The idea was that some fields are more and more, more or less organized and structured, while other matters are more open-ended and fluid. Some sectors cannot prepare for anything and change from day to day. New people come in, new ideas, new tasks, new expectations happen every day. While in other fields, you have to have somebody consistent and somebody stable. Somebody that can work through and use rules and systems to manage their day and expectations. Somebody that could work with long-term pursuits and organization. 
Using these eight economies, introvert, extrovert, intuitive, sensor, feeling, thinking, judging or perceiving, you could motivate and you could describe people as one of 16 possible personality types, each a unique combination of these traits. And this is uh, where the MBTI became really interesting. It became and it had its massive success helping organize the workforce, the new, the big, large amount of women searching for new jobs and the massive amounts of people, young people looking for their first career and those that had just landed their first job. The idea was the MBTI could be used to group people together and create the ideal workplace. The idea was some people were better suited for certain jobs and so the MTI was used to find the best of the best for each particular field. It's no coincidence then that still today most people take their first MBTI test at work. It is at work that people are first introduced to the MTI and into the idea of 16 personality types. Even though perhaps they've read online about it earlier this is where you get the biggest industry and the MTI is a billion dollar industry working all over the world in multiple workplaces in some way or form to categorize and group people and help build skills. The idea is if we can understand our workforce we can also help them find the right tasks. Should I trust this person with the more analytical tasks or should I trust them with the more social tasks? Should I help them take care of organization? Is, are they good potential candidates for leadership? Or are they better candidates for journalism or for exploration or for adaptation? Now the interesting thing about this era is I believe in the past we were more focused on trying to mold ourselves according to how other people saw us. But at this stage we start thinking how do I see myself? We start realizing that we can't do everything. We can't live up to every expectation. We can't do and be just like our parents. We can't live up to the societal ideal of the ideal national family man or family woman. We have to go out and do something for ourselves. Now the biggest criticism against the MBTI is it rests upon stereotypes. It rests upon simple, shallow, easy definitions of personality traits. And a lot of time this is a correct assumption. Yes, a lot of MTI tests, a lot of uh, personnel tests out there focus a lot on m the most easy, the most visible, the most stereotypical extremes of each personality type. Most ENFP personality descriptions are extreme versions built to be easily identified. And worse than that, a lot of them are written in a way that they will appeal to anyone. So. The personnel tests are written so that no matter what type you get, no matter if the test works or not, you will identify with the type you got. You will want to identify with it because it's written in a positive and neutral and vague manner that allows you to think that it's correct even if it's not. <laughs> Yet over time scientific alternatives to the MTI has emerged and we have for example the big five and we have uh, other systems like DISC gaining more and more popularity. Now, DISC is one of the less scientific versions of personality psychology. The Big Five, however, it rests upon purely quantifiable personality psychology. What that means is, can we define it? Can we measure it? Yes, then it exists. If we can measure it, if we can measure personality trait, if we can build that strong statistical support for a dichotomy, then it is real. But if it's big, wishy-washy, uh, hit or miss, if anyone can get a different result at any point of time, then it's not scientific. So why do so many people prefer the MBTI over the Big Five? The simple answer is, the Big Five doesn't tell you anything interesting about yourself. A lot of the time, the Big Five is so focused on what is most measurable that it also becomes the most simplistic. What it says about the human person is nothing that you can already see or derive from a person on your own. Yes, you can know that the person is more competitive and yes, you can easily see that the person is more outgoing. These things are easy. They are focused on our behavior and our behavior is something that is very, very visible and very, very real. Now with this you could say the big five makes scientific sense but it doesn't make psychological sense for an individual. That means as an individual reading the big five you can often feel misunderstood because a lot of these things are, yes, accurate, valid statements about how you act and behave in some situations, but it doesn't explain the drive, the motivation or the thought process behind it. 
and this is why the MBTI has gotten such big appeal. The MBTI rests upon Carl Jung's theory on the cognitive functions, and Carl Jung's theory is one of the few that tries to actively dis explain the thought process, the motivation, and the emotional drive of the individual. Now, it makes sense the Big Five doesn't measure these things. It makes sense that science hasn't been able to accurately explain the science behind the MBTI. Because can we really measure a thought? Can we really accurately, statistically secure the existence of a cognitive function? A lot of these things are fluid, vague, and can only be observed from within through introspection. Because of this, the MBTI as and the main assumption of the MTI is you cannot understand your personality type from purely looking at your behavior. You also have to look inside. You have to talk to somebody. You have to see a coach. You have to go inside yourself. You have to read and explore and take a time to really check in. Now, the MTI has been correctly criticized for lacking a strong scientific foundation. Though a lot of people out there are trying to find scientific evidence trying to investigate the theories and doing a good job doing so, so far nobody has found anything conclusive. So what that means is the MBTI's validity doesn't come from its scientific evidence, but from its ability to help further human and personal growth. It is because it can help teach you valuable lessons about yourself. It is as a tool for introspection. It is because of what it can teach you about your friends and family members that it has become so popular. And thanks to the MBTI, people out there are countlessly every day discovering their passions and interests and truly getting and truly learning to listen to themselves. So Carl Jung was a genius that saw personality a lot deeper than most traditional psychologists. While most focus on the pure identity of an individual to the tribe or to society or to their workplace, Carl Jung really tried to look at the individual, the ego, as the emotional self, the passions, the motivations, the interests, and the deeper feelings inside a person. So as we grow and as we become older, I believe the MBTI is only going to become more and more popular as a tool to understand the self and as a tool to understand your fundamental motivations. The MBTI beyond that can offer insight to help you understand the world at large and the people around you. And so with the MTI, you can transcend, you know, the tribal conflicts, the misunderstandings, the issues you have working together with other people, and you can build a base awareness of other as well as self. At the end of the day, the MTI becomes about transcending the ego. Carl Jung's theories become about moving past the ego and expanding your awareness to also account for and see other people. With this theory, we can learn to understand our husbands or wives, it, we can understand the friends and our family members and we can build stronger and more healthy relationships with other people. What that means, while you begin looking at your static self and your abilities, eventually you'll find there's something beyond that. There's something beyond what I do good at work or how I want to appear to my friends or family. There is a self beyond that that is my deeper awareness of my values and who I am. And it's because of this that the MBTI is so fascinating and it's because of this it is so popular. So if you agree with this, if you have any thoughts about MTI, the Big Five, the Enneagram, let me know in the comments down below. And if you think a friend should know about this, feel free to share this video with other people who are interested in or new to the MTI. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.